Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta. Social networks, which we've been studying for the undergraduate social networks class at UMA, are interesting from an intellectual point of view. Uh, you can spend a lot of time simply studying social networks on their own terms uh, to satisfy your intellectual curiosity, but there's more you can do uh, with social networks. It's possible now to build a career outside of academia that's based on social networks. And these careers uh, are based in many fields. Uh, epidemiology, the study of crime, uh, the study of urban planning, a particularly new professional field that has to do with social networks is that of social media analytics and social media consulting. It's possible for you to get a career started uh, with just a little bit of knowledge of social networks and a little bit of business know-how. What I'd like to show you today is an interview with uh, Tracy Eau Claire of Talk Media. Uh, Tracy Eau Claire uh, works out of the Waterville area of Maine and works with a number of clients in and around central Maine and uh, the state more broadly in order to help those clients uh, optimize their social media presence in order to accomplish the things that they set out to do, whether that's to sell a product, to advertise a service, or to promote a cause. Uh, I'd like you to uh, listen to Ms. Eau Claire's story as she talks about starting out as a recent college graduate, finding her way into the profession of social media analytics and social media consulting, and her advice on how to really build a career that's effective and useful to clients in this regard. Uh, business may not be the only reason that you're interested in social networks, but it certainly is one possibility. I started out, I'm, I have a four-year degree in marketing management from Thomas College. Fresh out of college, I started working for Peter Redman at Northern Mattress and Furniture. He's the guy with the mullet and the little dogs. I did that, um, came in as a, as a marketing assistant uh, with the marketing manager. The marketing manager had a baby and ended up never coming back. So I took um, over all her responsibilities, which included media buying, um, ad creation, circulation, um, direct mail. I managed radio, radio campaigns, television campaigns, and then also communicated with the merchandise department and the purchasing department to, to implement sales promotions, so on and so forth. So it sounds like you really got into social media professionally and uh, media consulting by teaching yourself on the fly. Well, with, with after I left there, uh -huh. that was like a crash course, and then they weren't paying me enough, so, <laughs> so I decided to jump boat and ended up in sales, in advertising sales for Maine Biz, which uh -huh. is a statewide business newspaper. Um, all along, while I was in sales, because I was meeting these great marketing people and business owners, um, as you may know, biz, uh, Maine Biz is a B2B newspaper mm -hmm. for the state of Maine, similar to the Hartford Business Journal or um, Worcester Business Journal, but we have the whole state <laughs> because that's how Maine is run. All along, I, anytime I did my sales follow-up, I made sure that I connected to everybody through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. and, and I was an avid Facebook user. Twitter, not so much. Um, so I've always been like that how social media allows people to communicate with each other and how to use it. And I've always used it to create build business relationships. Um, after Main Biz, I ended up starting Talk Media, which is my company now. I originally started Talk Media offering marketing management services because that's what I know and that's what I like. Um, however, I started hosting Social Media Breakfast Central Maine, and I just use a lot of social media personally, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, not so much YouTube right now, but I'm going to start with this video. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people started, I started getting branded as a social media guru or professional or just somebody that's in the know. Um, so it made sense for me to switch my services and just offer social media and email marketing. And what are those services that you do offer now to your clients? And, and what kind of clients do you have? 
Well, currently what I'm offering is social media marketing and email marketing. That's the general broad category. Um, it breaks down to setup of social media accounts. The, the big three are Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn um, for company brands. So I'll set them up, and I'll offer monthly content management plans where mm -hmm. I'll do all the posting, I'll respond to uh, questions, I'll you know, monitor the page, uh, monitor Twitter feeds, distribute information, basically, to create that relationship between the brand and the audience. Um, most of my accounts right now are focused on growing their online reach, mm -hmm. because obviously the more you know, the more people you know, the more likely that business is going to come to you, so on and so forth. So for you, you found that professionally speaking, if you want to be most effective, you have to create a whole constellation of social media presences, not just one. One is not enough? Is that fair? Sometimes one is enough. Okay. It really depends on the client and who they're trying to reach. For instance, a restaurant mm -hmm. could just use Facebook and be very successful. And they're not, their normal target market in the state of Maine are not going to be on Twitter. If you're looking for that more high-end B2B uh, market, you, need, you should be on Twitter. But should you be on Twitter if you don't have any content to share, any professional content to share? Um, and that's where the blogging and the content creation on the website take place. Do you, so, do you, sorry, do you always recommend that no matter what, that, uh, a professional presence be on LinkedIn? So would you recommend that a restaurateur would be on LinkedIn, or is that only certain I recommend sorts? that anybody that is in business should have a personal account on LinkedIn. And they should have that fully filled out. So it should say 100% in the top right. Sounds good. Yeah. So that's one of the things that you would recommend to anybody who wants to break into the social media business as well. Oh, most definitely. If When I'm looking for people that come to me for an intern or for a position, I always... And I don't know if it's legal <laughs> because I'm not an HR person, but I always look at their social media profiles because how they're using those social media profiles is going to determine how well they can use social media for me, you know, for the brands. So it sounds like you almost get a read off of someone, whether it's a potential someone that you hire or a potential client, mm -hmm. someone that you're going to work for. You get a, a read off of where they're coming from, not just by talking to them. Prior to going to to meet clients, I research their social, each network for their presence to see how they're using it. Obviously, that's what I'm offering, so I need to evaluate that. But, um, but I used to do it when I was in sales as well for, for main biz. I'd you know, look at their LinkedIn and see a lot, you know, because it's interesting to know what makes people tick by where they used to work or some of their interests that they're posted publicly. Like some people like golf. I don't. <laughs> but but you know what I'm saying? It's not you can get a profile, a personality profile from from what they have out there online, which is a very good point. Not to post things that you don't want out there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and that's the difference between a professional social media presence and a personal one. The two are are separate. Do you have a separate professional account and a separate personal account? I I blur the line because my business depends on my brand that I call, my personal brand that I call Tracy Eau Claire. Mm -hmm. um, I am who I am and I, I try to, I'm an honest person, so I want to I wanna put that out to people. I want people to know who I am as a person um, and that helps me market my business services. So with my business accounts, I definitely don't say, do status updates about my children mm -hmm. or... Um, or what I'm having to eat that day, which I don't do anyways, but, but um, you know, where I'm going and so, so forth. That's more geared to all business-related items or, or topics. <laughs> I guess the, quest, the big question I'm, I'm wanting to get at is that, you know, you're someone who's able to sell a brand of yourself, as you put in quotes, Tracy Eau Claire, mm -hmm. right, who is not necessarily showing all the Tracy Eau Claire that there is to see out there. You know, you keep your business with your kids off to one side. Right. But in the social media world, this is one of the things we do. We sell our relationships to each other. We use the, the fact that we're connected with other people to talk about what we do. Mm -hmm. When you're working with clients, do you recommend that they... Uh, use their personal contacts with other people in the community and then try to cultivate those in order to get some kind of positive outcome in business and things like that? Or do you recommend that your clients make a, 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 a 
straightforward cut between the two? I recommend that my clients use their personal relationships to gain business, uh -huh. to gain reach, to create word of mouth marketing, to get referrals back. Um, and, and it's before you could pick and choose like where you go to business networking events versus a party, um, you know, uh, or wherever. But you're, you should you should be passionate about whatever it is that you're doing, um, at some level. I know sometimes you know you're fresh out of college and you 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 just want a job <laughs> to get the experience. But you should be you should like what you do, and um, that should show through your personality on, on social media as well as in person. I mean, like, if, for instance, if you go to an economic developer um, and, and you ask them, you know, what is it about your town that's fun? And they're like, nothing. You know, just because they're in a social setting versus a business setting, that, that raises those red flags. Like, okay, I don't trust this person um, to follow through. And if I do buy something, are they going to be gone tomorrow? You don't, wanna, you don't want to have your clients or anybody think that about yourself because it makes you flighty and... And it, it doesn't build trust in, for the relationship. So one of the things I hear you saying is that sometimes if people are in a business environment, if they're talking about their connection to their community, to their hometown, to networks of you know, friends and family, and this is a place I live, and this is a place I'm committed to, that that helps send a message out that says I'm a serious person, I'm integrated, mm -hmm. and I'm going to follow through. Right. So that's actually one way that you could be using that set of relationships to strengthen your business presence. Oh, definitely. Do you find that a lot of your clients are ending up selling to the people they know in contexts outside of their work? Meaning, can you, can well, you clarify the question, Jim? Absolutely. So <laughs> if you have a roofing company mm -hmm. or if you have a food service company, do you find that those people are talking a lot to people that they know who aren't necessarily already buying from them on social media? That they're using Facebook and Twitter yes. and they're connecting to people who didn't know about them in that context, but maybe know them from someplace else? Yes. I find that myself a lot in business. I know somebody that... It really depends on what type of business you are. So if you're, if you're offering business services, it might not be the same audience. You know, if you're, if you're B2B and you're offering business services to businesses, then it really needs to be um, those people that own businesses. It's kind of like a community of business owners, you know, um, or business professionals. Whereas you're marketing to the end consumer, B2C, then it's more likely to be your friends and family, depending on what circles you have, what networks you have. See, I have, it, to me, where I've grown this network of, um, this social network of Tracy O'Blair. <laughs> um, I, ha I have different niches, different target markets that, um, I, did, I mean, when I'm talking on my Facebook about an event that I'm giving or, you know, a social media seminar, an email marketing seminar, um, it's not relevant to a lot of people. But what is, but sometimes... I will have people that it's not relevant to, that know somebody, that it is relevant to, and it will come back to me. Although, it's valuable in a way, but there's no direct return on investment. So, have you, that you could beg to differ, you know, people struggle with that. <laughs> so, is there a, a particular place where you've struggled with that, where you've said, you know, I'm sending out this message, and maybe... This is not the right audience for me to send oh, this yeah, message definitely. to. So what would one of those circumstances have been? Um, it's hard sometimes for me to know for clients like where that fine line is because it's really a personal preference on whether or not people want to solicit mm -hmm. or to, um, distribute information that's business to their family and friends. Mm -hmm. To me, like I said, it goes back to that you're being passionate about what you're doing. You want these people to know. And often you'll find that they're interested. If they're interested in you, they should be interested typically about what you do. So educating them is a good thing. Um, but some clients, they're, they're scared of doing that. So um, for me, as 
you know, distributing information. I just need to kind of be on the, make sure that I'm on the same page with the client. And if I'm not, then I need to get on that page <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. So when you're working with a, a client and in this professional social media environment, you're trying to bring them aboard, what's the outcome that you're working toward? When you look six months down the line, what do you want that client to have accomplished or the social media to have accomplished for the client that hasn't happened yet? I always like to clarify the objections and mission of the plan first so that and identify key factors that we're going to be looking at such as website traffic, um, incoming leads, sales obviously, brand awareness, um, and that one is really easy to judge now because most of all the networks give you a reach number of how many people you're reaching. And you always want that number obviously going up um, in the right direction in terms of who you're reaching. <clears throat> so I require once a month reporting with my clients face to face. And that, and that happens for two reasons. One, we can sit down, we can look at the Google Analytics report, we can look at any statistics that are on Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, things that I find valuable. I try to break it down with, with a couple key statistics so the client can understand it, and then we can go in more in depth if, the, if they're interested. Mm -hmm. um, so we sit down and we do that, and then we can also strategize, I can find out what's going on with them. Because being a marketing professional or a social media marketing professional, professional, you need to really understand your clients and in order to present them on social media, what's going on that week for, you know, trade shows or what's going on in the office, somebody's having a birthday, you know, just little things like that. Um, you, as a marketer, you really have to kind of jump in there and feel their brand mm -hmm. and kind of live it and present yourself that way so you can present them online. So... It, did it, I answer your question? Absolutely. But <laughs> okay. It, when, when you did, it sounded like you had a combination of two things. You had this kind of qualitative knowledge, this deep knowledge of somebody's brand, and at the same time, and that might you know be expressed in words or it might be expressed in pictures, mm -hmm. on the other hand, you have this set of numbers, statistics, mm -hmm. key performance indicators, mm -hmm. measurements, things that you can quantify. Yeah, and that your job is to combine those two into some story that's compelling for your client. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Yes. My job is to get the client business and exposure. <laughs> um, it's always great to see when a client gets a business out of social media because it makes the whole contract with me worth it. You know, one client, two clients, and they're happy, and I'm happy, and we're all feeling it. <laughs> um, so, and sometimes it takes a little while to get there. Thank you very much. Okay.